Why are you here? Are you here because you want to reaffirm your purchase of a battle rifle? Are you here because you think 308 is actually God's caliber and 45 can suck it? Well, you're in the right place. Let's jump into it. The first argument that comes up as far as battle rifles are concerned is just the power of them. If you want something that can defeat body armor or at least make body armor a little bit more complicated, as well as maybe punch through some barriers, and 308 is definitely an, an incredible caliber when you compare that to something like 5.56. Now, 5.56 ballistics are still exceptionally good. It's won a lot of wars. We've used it for a long time. So, so by no way am I discounting 5.56. This is just an argument for battle rifles. It's a little bit fun. You are here because you have a battle rifle. I know you are. Don't pretend like you're not. So as far as defeating body armor, level four plates, most 308, unless it's some sort of AP, is not gonna be going through it. Uh, and that's also velocity dependent, depending on your range. However, one of the most common plates is a HESCO L210 in the United States. This is like a, a special threat plate. And there's also just a lot of like level 3A and things like that. 308 is gonna have no problem going through those. And depending on the plate now, it might not go through the plate completely, especially with some of these uh, higher rated plates. However, back face deformation is still a thing. So it might not go through, but if that round is hitting them center mass, and it's concaving even just a little bit, it's gonna knock them on their ass. It might break some ribs, maybe their solar plexus. I don't know, it depends. However, it can defeat a lot of other plates. Like I said, those HESCO L210s, one of the most popular in the United States right now, it can go right through that. So if you wanna complicate those situations as far as what kind of body armor you might be running into in Minecraft, then something to do. Something else is the ability to punch through structures as well as avoid any form of deflection. If I'm shooting through, say, a concrete wall or maybe more of a cinder block wall, then the 308 is gonna perform exceptionally better. Uh, as far as just regular FMJ rounds, a 308 is, is gonna go through a cinder block wall, one, maybe two shots, depending on the placement. Five, five, six, depending, usually takes about four or five and it breaks up quite a bit while going through. So if you just wanna punch right through it, then 308 is a caliber for you. That power comes great responsibility. With that power comes range. Now, usually 308 is intended for a little bit more of a longer range purpose, or at least it has the capability of maintaining its ballistics much further. So if you feel like you're gonna be in a little bit more of a ranged conflict, then 308 might be a good caliber. It's like a can over there. Think I can hit it? <laughs> Dead miss. That's when rapid fire, that CQC type thing, isn't going to be that big of a deal. And so that's when that range, accuracy, and maintaining those ballistics, as well as trying to punch through some stuff and avoid some deflection, comes into mind. I like it as far as like a very urban warfare, uh, where it's like New York City and you're doing like building to building. If I'm inside, probably not my best choice. It'll work. But... 
uh, building to building. I can punch through glass, maybe some, uh, some white wall, mild steel, whatever it might be. So life isn't all sunshine and rainbows in the 308 world. It definitely has some drawbacks. Oh. One of them is just the fact that you're gonna have more recoil. As we talked about a little bit earlier, or later, I guess, depending on how they, I edit the video, you're gonna have a lot more recoil that you're going to feel. So as far as recoil control, felt recoil, it is something to be considering when comparing those two calibers. So we're just gonna test out those two calibers and see how they perform. First one is going to be the 5.56, and then after that is going to be the 308. I'm not gonna do anything to control the recoil just so you can see the felt impulse that I'm feeling or you as a shooter would be feeling. Capacity and weight are also huge limiting factors of the 308 platform. On average, the 308 platform battle rifle is going to be much heavier than your 556 variants. You'll need to be aware that you're gonna be able to carry much less ammo for the weight and your capacity in your magazines are going to be substantially less. These are just simple 20 round mags and they take up roughly the same size and about twice the weight of a 556 mag of 30 rounds. So if you're going to be wanting to carry as many rounds as your 556 rifle, then you're going to be having a lot more uh, mags all around your body, onto your belt, maybe a drop leg platform, but that's just something that you will have to be considering when setting up your battle rifle. The ammo is substantially heavier too, so if you're planning on utilizing that, so be sure you're hitting the gym or you're going to be fucking miserable. Now, let me be clear, I am by no means discounting the 5.56 caliber. I know some guys are gonna watch this and they're gonna be like, Whoa, and get all butt hurt. You know, it's just, whichever rifle you choose, whichever, you know, there's, there's gonna be pros and cons to each of them. Just pick something that you want and works for the scenario that you're planning for in the Minecraft world. An argument as far as ballistics are concerned is the fact of 308 can go a lot further and maintain its lethality when opposed to 556. 556 is gonna lose its explosive cavitation right around the 300 yard mark, depending on the barrel length, things like that in the ammo type. I know a lot of guys are running 10 threes, 11 fives, things like that, much shorter inch barrels. When the 5.56 round was designed to be shot out of a 20 inch barrel. And so as far as overall lethality is concerned, it's a lot less than a lot of people are pretending to be. Like, well, my rifle can go all the way out to five, 600 yards. Like, yeah, but does it have the same ballistics that 5.56 is designed around at that range? Probably not. So don't lie to yourself. I'm not saying it's not a bad gun or it's a bad gun, but just don't lie to yourself when trying to set up your all all purpose rifle. It's got a 10 and a half inch barrel. That shit loses lethality in like 50 yards. I'll put it up somewhere. However, I will say when talking about ballistic, 308 maintains that same lethality hundreds and hundreds of yards. If you're gonna be using it with a 16 inch barrel, the distance is gonna be a little bit further. So as far as the lethality for a 5.56, it's gonna be roughly this. And the lethality for a 308 is gonna be roughly this. You can get other rounds that, that perform a little bit differently, but I think when a lot of people are going into say the, the great Minecraft war, you're probably just gonna be running some sort of FMJ M855 something of that caliber. So we're not gonna be having these boutique performance rounds, these you know, 77 grain OTMs. It's gonna be these typical FMJ. And I can tell you ballistically, M80 ball is gonna be much better at range and just you know, punching through stuff than M855. A brief little bit on the gear when setting up your 308 is it might not fit a lot of your standard mag pouches. I'm a huge fan of HSGI tacos, or for me, I utilize these G-Code Softshell Scorpions. Maybe one day they'll sponsor me. I, I, I swear to God, I've been pushing these things since I got them a few years ago. They're awesome, okay? With certain types of chest rigs, you might struggle to get them in depending on the layout. Uh, I can tell you with one of my chest rigs, I can fit two mags in them uh, when it's a four mag placard. So I can fit two in, and then once I get to the third, I cannot fit it in anymore because it's pushing itself this way. 
So if you're gonna do that, make sure to have a dedicated platform to run the 308 or just make sure that it can fit. Another piece of uh, gear advice is just your 308 mags usually sit a little bit lower in your pouches depending on the pouch setup you have. So I found that having some sort of mag pull is very beneficial when having this set up just so you can grab it a little bit easier if it's sitting really deep into those mag carriers. As you can see here, we've got a piece of duct tape and then a loop of 550 paracord, and that's all it is. And that just lets you put your finger in and yank it out. They also make just actual mag poles. They make them for 308 as well. If you'd rather that set up, that's fine too. Uh, these is just a cheap little mod that you can put onto all your mags. If you're concerned about the weight of your rig, a area where you can save a little bit of weight is the mags that you use. One of the most common for battle rifles is just going to be some sort of FAL mag. That's what mine uses, these uh, FAL metric mags. But for the most part, I run thermal mags. These are a polymer mag. I don't know quite how durable they are if you compare it to some sort of P mag. I will tell you, I've been running these for uh, maybe eight years now uh, in, this, in this setup and I've never had a problem with one. These are substantially lighter than your FAL mags. If you're running another battle rifle and you can just run a P mag, run those. But I know a lot of guys run those metal mags. They're a bit of a vibe. If you're looking just to save weight, these are way lighter. Regrettably, we have to talk about cost. <gasps> training with 308 is substantially more than training with 556 or just stockpiling ammunition. <sighs> 308 is roughly a dollar a round for just basic bitch M80. Pretty awful. When you mag dump, you feel bad. When you miss a shot, you feel bad. While 556, five, depending on the time of the year, is roughly like 24 cents around. As far as training and stockpiling, that is definitely a con. So if you are on much more of a budget, 556 five, is gonna be a great option because you're gonna be able to train more, you're gonna be able to shoot more, you're gonna be able to stockpile more because it's cheaper. Now, where would I use? the 308 where would i use the battle rifle if i was to be running some sort of checkpoint where i was in a static location and i didn't have to worry about hiking through the mountains i'd absolutely use a 308 if i'm trying to take out a vehicle an engine block go through a windscreen then the 308 is going to perform a lot better than a typical 556 that's pretty cool i know i heard one argument this is way back in the day was like an anti-pirate gun so this is a totally different scenario but I know in some locations, pirates is, is, is a big deal. Everyone stay calm. We are taking over the ship. I of us. <laughs> and so they hire guards to be on their ships. And a lot of those guys use some sort of 308 large cow weapon because it's going to do a lot more damage to the boarding craft. And they're usually just small maneuverable boats. And so you're not gonna be rapid firing as much, but having nice solid kinetic hits that a 308 or some sort of larger caliber can provide is gonna be beneficial. So in that type of situation, pretty cool, pretty cool. Let's talk about how I've got my RFB set up. This isn't anything too spectacular. It does look a little bit different than a lot of RFBs because I have changed out the front rail system. This is a Lucky Irishman RFB rail and I feel like this has transformed this rifle into a rifle that I kind of liked into my favorite rifle to shoot. Uh, this lets you get a much further grip up forward. It lets you add rail space as well as making sure that you have plenty of accessories if you want to be running for night vision or bipods, flashlights, anything like that. A lot of common accessorizing opportunities for the RFB is just a threaded on quad rail that goes directly onto the barrel and that will affect your accuracy if you're using like a bipod or anything like that for it. So if you're looking for something that has a little bit more of a range capability, I wouldn't use anything like that. So that's one of the reasons why I ended up getting this Lucky Irishman rail. And I'll tell you what, I've absolutely loved it. It looks like it adds a lot of weight, but it's actually lighter than the original Palmer handguard, which when I learned about that, blown away, blown away. Once you put on components and stuff, it's gonna be a lot more heavy, but <laughs> that's besides the point. What I've got is a Primary Arms 1 to 6 LPVO. This is my first LPVO I've ever purchased, and I think it's incredible. It's a first focal plane, so 
when you zoom in the reticle changes, which I really prefer, because no matter what your hold is, your, your holds are gonna be correct, uh, which I really, really like. I don't know why there's a second focal plane. M maybe somebody can put it in the comments as to why those exist. Personally, I think this optic really, really rocks, especially for the price point. It's way more of a budget price point, but as far as glass quality, reticle, and the, uh, the eye relief, I think it's incredible. I, I, I truly do. Next, we've got a Vortex Viper as an offset. I originally set this up so I could utilize it for night vision passive aiming. However, that really did not work for me because the offset makes it a little bit too aggressive of, a, of an angle to look through comfortably with night vision. So that doesn't really work. If you're going to be wanting to have some sort of setup like this, put it on the top. Originally, why I didn't do that was because I was worried about height over bore. As you can see, my, my height over bore is, is pretty drastic with this platform. So I was really worried about that. But at this point, at least it would work. It'd be a lot easier to look through those with night vision as opposed to this really aggressive angle that I've got on this offset over here. So mainly I use an infrared laser. This is a Holosun LS321. I've got a couple of these. I'm a pretty big uh, proponent for these because I think they're a, a budget friendly option. They do the job pretty well. Their illuminator is very lackluster. A small thing that I've got over here is just a Kydex overmold that goes over the stock. It's pure metal there. So if you're shooting it in the winter, it gets really, really cold. So when you bring your rifle up to your cheek, it can be just frigid, especially if you've set your rifle down for a minute or you haven't shot it in a little while and just leeches the heat from your face. So this was like a $20 piece and it just made it way more comfortable. Finally, I just have a blast can on here. Originally, I just had a thread protector on here, but when I built this out to be a Space Force gun, I just built it out for fun. Uh, I'll, I'll put in a picture here. It's the ugliest looking gun you've ever seen. Uh, but my buddy just got it for me. It's the blast can. It does not have any performance benefits, uh, at least that I'm aware of. I think it just increases the recoil a little bit. I'll change it out eventually and just put a muzzle brake on. I just haven't done that because I think brakes are a big fuck you to everybody who's shooting to your left and right. Uh, but as far as 308 is concerned, I think a muzzle brake is something that's pretty necessary uh, in, in order to make it much more shootable and control that recoil. It's one of those really cheap upgrades you can do to increase the performance of your rifle. All right, everyone, thanks for coming. Hope this was at least a little bit educational or a bit of a fun conversation. Let me know what your thoughts are. Maybe I'm completely wrong, or maybe you hate the RFE and you think it's the ugliest kind of all time. I think it's kind of cool. POV, you try and steal my gushers. Get back! <laughs> Oh, man. 308. Fuck. Hey, wait, hold on. My gun needs a bathroom break. Where I put my hand, and I think a lot of people have this sort of grip, is they put their hand up front when you're trying to control recoil, it's just a little bit more comfortable. Uh, that, that, is, that is where my hand goes. And that is the direct point of ejection for these shells. So as you're firing, those shells go right onto your thumb. You'll probably see me burn the shit out of my hand in a second. God damn, fucking hot. Yeah, fucking hot. And cut. However, back face, back face deformation. However, back face deformation is still a thing.